Hello and welcome to Explore TBR, the channel dedicated to finding and exploring what remains of the historic Thailand to Burma Railway. In this video, we will be exploring the railway in the area known during the war as Kanyu. This section of the Thailand to Burma Railway lies between the Hellfire Pass and Kin Sayok sections of the railway, which are each covered in separate videos on this channel. This section actually continues westwards from Compressor Cutting, which marked the end of the Hellfire Pass section, and extends a few kilometers onwards to the northwest. Although many of the Kanyu camps were located closer to Hellfire Pass itself, the wartime Kanyu station was just to the west of this section. Here we are looking at the Google Maps terrain view. We saw in the Hellfire Pass video how the railway line was descending all the way from the summit near Tampi, through the Hellfire Pass and Hintock area to Compressor Cutting. This section extends northwest from Compressor Cutting and the line continues its descent, carved into the hillside much of the way. The line descends from around 170 meters elevation at Compressor Cutting to around 120 meters elevation at the trail access here and continues downhill westwards towards Kin Sayok. Looking at Google Maps, starting in Kanchanaburi, we need to travel around an hour and a half up Highway 323, a dozen or so kilometers beyond Hellfire Pass, to the small road 3090 here. If you watched the Kin Sayok video, this will be familiar to you. The Kin Sayok section of the line started at this T-junction and extends northwards. For the Kanyu section, we will turn left at the T-junction and continue for around another 10 kilometers further down the road. As we saw in the Kin Sayok video, this road was a dirt road years ago and was laid down directly over the old railway line. The railway ballast was clearly visible in a strip down the middle of the road. Looking at the satellite imagery here, it looks like this road was paved all the way to the end sometime recently. This photo was taken in late 2015, when the last few kilometers were still a dirt road, and you can see the railway ballast along the right side of the road. Continuing all the way to the end, the road ends at the entrance to someone's property. On your left, you'll see a dirt track which goes around 120 meters north, all the way to the foot of the hill. There's a small clearing here where you can park your motorbike. If you drive up in a car, you'll need to leave the car back at the road and walk up. There's a footpath that starts here, goes up the slope of the hill, and reaches the railway trace after around 50 meters. You can see the line of the railway trace here and make out its path all the way east around two and a half kilometers to compressor cutting here. Let's have a look at the features along this stretch of the railway. Walking up the path from the clearing, you come to the railway line. Photo one was taken where the path meets the railway line looking east. The railway line at this point is somewhat cleared. It's not a groomed trail like the Hellfire Pass section, but it is still a frequently used path, especially by the locals. When I was here in 2015, there were a couple of people harvesting what looked to be bamboo shoots off in the jungle on either side of the trail, and they were using this path. They were very friendly and exchanged waves and smiles as we passed each other. Generally, the terrain along this section of the railway is very similar to that in the Hellfire Pass section. The line is still descending on a 2.2% grade, and much of the way it follows along a ledge cut into the face of the cliff, with trussel bridges spanning the many ravines along the way. But while it feels very similar to the Hellfire Pass section in terms of the terrain, it's very different in that there are no tourists here. You will almost certainly be the only person here. You can marvel at the prisoners' incredible achievements in building this railway, the massive bridges and deep cuttings, but without the feeling that it's a tourist attraction. Just the sound of birds and cicadas in the trees. Personally, I found exploring this section to be the most enjoyable and rewarding of all the videos. The railway runs along flat land along the hillside for the first 250 meters, then comes to a bridge across the first ravine. As with all the trestle bridges along the railway, the wooden bridge timbers are long gone, and you'll need to climb down and across the gap. There is a clear trail to follow, so it's not difficult. Just beyond a short cutting, there's a second bridge, the rubble from the cutting was used to partially fill the ravine here to provide a solid base for the bridge foundations and also reduce the height required for the bridge. Just beyond this bridge, and for the next 160 meters, the line is built up on a slight embankment. You can still see the remarkable stonework of this embankment, still in place nearly 80 years after it was built. Photo 2 shows the neatly fitted stones of the embankment, looking across the railway line to the valley beyond. 
After this embankment, there is a long and deep cutting, followed by yet another bridge, deeper on the west end and stepped up towards the east. After this bridge, you will pass through three short cuttings. Photo 3 shows the middle of the three, facing northwest. The line briefly cuts along a ledge in the hillside, across a flat spot, and then through another cutting. Then yet another cutting. Then you'll come to another bridge. On the west side of the bridge, the terrain sloped downwards so the line was built up on an embankment leading to the bridge itself. Again the ravine was partially filled with the rubble left over from cutting the railway line into the hillside. Photo 4 was taken from the ravine, looking west at the embankment. You can see where the embankment was built up on the bedrock below it. Beyond this bridge, the line is cut into the side of the cliff for the next 900 meters. The rock rubble from the cut was used to build up the downhill side, shown in photo 5. You can see the ledge of the railway track and how the rocks were used to build up the bank on the downhill side. There is a truly enormous amount of rock here that was cut out of the cliff and built up into an embankment, all by hand. After around 500 meters, you'll come to yet another bridge. As with the previous bridges, the ravine is partially filled, but there are concrete foundations for this bridge. Photo 6 shows one of these foundations. You can clearly see where the bridge timbers fit into the top of the concrete footings. Also near this bridge, you can find some of the original wooden sleepers still in place along the railway line. After another 300 meters along the ledge, the railway starts to curve to the left. It passes through one more cutting, then across a very high embankment made of rock rubble from the cuttings. Photo 7 shows this embankment, looking towards compressor cutting. And just beyond this embankment, you finally reach compressor cutting, the same cutting which marked the end of the trail in the Hellfire Pass video. This clip shows the walk back through compressor cutting from the far end, walking back the way we came from. I need to address the issue of accessing this section of the railway. I know in the Hellfire Pass video we saw that the trail is blocked at Hintock Road and you're not supposed to go any further. So you may be wondering if you're officially allowed to walk on this section of the railway, which technically lies beyond Hintock Road. I don't have the answer to that question, but I do know that there were no signs or barriers coming in from the west, and all the locals I saw seemed to think nothing of me being there. I got the impression that the barrier at Hintock Road is just to keep all the tourists from wandering too far away and becoming exhausted or lost. This clip continues from compressor cutting across the high stone embankment and through the next cutting.
and this clip shows more of the walk back towards the start of the trail. To get up to this section of the railway, you'll need to drive in. It's too far to walk from the highway, and obviously no buses or trains come here. You could rent a motorbike or car from Kanchanaburi, or possibly hire a car and driver. Once you're here, this is a fairly easy hike as the railway is quite clear. You could probably get away with shorts and a t-shirt, but consider heavier clothing if you have it. Certainly wear sturdy shoes, as the trail has many rocks underfoot and also has some steep slopes and uneven surfaces where the trussel bridges used to be. There are a few places where falls are possible down steep banks. Know your limits and don't take risks. Bring a buddy, or if you're alone, let someone know exactly where you're going and when you expect to return. Bring lots of water with you for this hike, and food if you need it. There's no food or water available anywhere near here. The walk to compressor cutting and back will be around 5 kilometers and take 2 to 3 hours. It's well worth it though, I think you'll find this to be one of the most interesting sections of the railway. Like I've said many times before, this railway is a site of historic importance. Please don't take anything and please don't leave any litter behind. Remember the thousands of people who died under appalling conditions constructing this railway and treat what remains of it with the respect it deserves. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting or informative. If so, please give the video a like and feel free to subscribe and check out the other videos on different sections of the railway. And if you do get out here to Kanyu and do this hike, let me know how it went in the comments below. I'd really like to hear from you. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.